Ah, okay, bunnies, bunnies, bunnies. So this is the free digi on my blog. <clears throat> and I will put a, co a comment in the links down below this video when the video is published. And that way, if anybody forgets where they are, <clears throat> they can go get them. The photograph of the bunny, I think, had dark places around here and then around in here. And what I did was just draw them so that I could either go inside or outside, depending on which direction I wanted the bunny, <clears throat> the, the bunny's shadows to be. I'm going to move this camera down so you can see better. Is that better? Or so I hope. <clears throat> and adding OWH labels. Yay! Okay, much better. So <clears throat> we'll start with this one doing some of the coloring on the outside of that, so we'll leave his nose white. And what I do is take a darker brown. This one is an E57. And you can do this with any of your stamps. I start with the, the areas that are right next to a line. so that the darkest place is around that line. And then take another color, sort of a medium one, and color next to it. Now if you use other <clears throat> coloring media like pencils or something, the same process applies. And I'll show you that because I've got my, my pencils and everything out too. And I'm just adding the next layer right next to it and with the Copics they'll start blending the two colors as they sit on the paper that way. Yeah I wish Copics weren't so expensive either but I'm telling you if by the way that I went through Tombows because I used to have to buy them all the time because I ran, ran them out of ink because I colored so much if you color a lot the Copics are worth it <clears throat> because you can just keep re-inking them and you're not buying a whole new marker every single time you run out. And so for me, that was a huge deal. <clears throat> and I have not had to then go buying all sorts of markers to replenish the ones I used up. Now I'm looking for a really light color. So I'm just letting the colors get lighter and lighter as they get further away from that dark shape and the dark edge. And then I can start the same process <clears throat> around the next shape that I want to make. And on this bunny, it ends right here. But you know his fur doesn't have a hard edge to it. So what I <clears throat> generally will do is take the darkest color and make sure it stays with the, the line. And then the next colors I'll extend out just a little bit further. Because that will soften the edge. I'll take it even further with that next color. So it softens it and you're not coloring just right up to where the line is. Because some digis will have an actual line that you color up to so it's a shape you fill in and then others you're kind of left to your own devices to figure out where they end. Yeah, I am coloring upside down. It is a little bit on the weird side. And it's weird that I can see it right side up on the screen, so I look up on the screen to check my, my coloring. And then I want to color the tops of his ears. And I want them to be mostly dark brown, so I'm going to give him even more of the dark brown portions.
And so the next decision comes, when do I turn <clears throat> the dark brown ears into light brown, or what am I going to do with this section? And <clears throat> I often don't come to this with a plan in mind. I just color until I feel like I've kind of come to an ending point. I think I'm going to soften that as it comes up here because that keeps me with the contrast between the dark section here and the light section here. And I'll let the top of his head be just a little bit of light brown color. And with the Copics, <clears throat> you can take the pen and press it down and then let it go. And you can do that kind of with Tombows and with other markers as well. Just kind of let the, let the end of it trail off. It doesn't work as well with other markers as it does with Copics, but it, it works pretty well. It gives you a really soft blend with the Copics at the very least. <clears throat> now, if I want his feet to be white, because I don't know that bunnies actually have brown feet unless they're dirty, then I'm just going to leave a little bit of the lightest color in the bottom section because the, the dark parts will generally be around the bottom and where his toes kind of meet and where they separate. And then there'll be a little bit of a shadow around his nose and mouth too. And then <clears throat> I'm also adding in just a tiny bit of detail with a super light pen. Now only if you have the super light pens will that work. If you don't have the really light ones, you'll end up with giant marks across him. So you can just leave those out. You can barely see them here, even in real life. The color's not great here, but even in real life, they're fairly visible. <clears throat> and then I'm using pink, even though I know bunny's ears probably aren't really pink on the inside, but when you're coloring a bunny, it kind of needs pink ears. <laughs> yeah, I color a lot, which is why I can color fast. <clears throat> Sorry if that was too fast for you, but I'm going to color a bunch of bunnies in different combos. So as I go, we'll keep talking through them, as long as my voice holds out. It's re weird. I, I was feeling sick the other day, and I'm feeling way better now, except for some reason I sound really awful. So there you have it. So that's one of the bunnies. You can also make them a lot softer. You don't have to have the the super dark colors around him because when I'm looking on the screen he looks really posterized. Um, he doesn't look quite that bad in real life and again I'll put uh, pictures on my blog after this is finished so you guys will be able to take a look at what they really look like. <clears throat> hey Ian, no fair laughing, you be nice. Okay, so you want a gray one? Okay, I'm going to add Hold on a second. <coughs> I want this one to be this. Let's see if that works. There we go. So now I can wave to you and I can yell at Ian, you be nice to, to Adele. Okay. I see a request for a gray one. <clears throat> you want an all gray bunny? Solid gray? Or, well, mostly gray. I guess bunnies aren't solid anything. Yes, please. Okay. All gray bunny. Now I wonder, let me see if I can <clears throat> get this one notch closer. I have this drawer thing with shelves. <coughs> Sorry, it's a shelf thing with drawers. Not even speaking correct English here. Okay, there we go. Is that fuzzy now? I don't know if it was clearer before. Let 
Anyway, <clears throat> all right, let's start with, in order to make him a, <clears throat> a bunny who's all one color, as opposed to this bunny who has kind of got different mottled spots, you'll still add your shadows, because you still, you know, even if a bunny's all one color, he's still got dark and light places. So I'm still going to add them. I'm going to give him a darker nose this time, though. So I'm coloring on the inside of his nose instead of on the outside. And I'm using a C5 marker, Cool Gray 5, right now. And again, I'm setting the marker down and dragging it <clears throat> so it will kind of trail off a little bit. I'm putting the, the darker color at the bottom edge of things so that the shadows are always almost always at the bottom of something unless your lighting is strange. The Copics are nice and forgiving which is one reason that it makes it fast to color with them because they blend so nicely you don't have to worry too much <clears throat> about the edge of whatever you're coloring because the next color will soften it up. Mine? Is he saying mine is looking more like a a goat? Bunnies can be gray. They don't have to. It's not always going to be a goat if it's gray. So the second color that I'm using in blending a lot of this stuff is a cool gray number three, C3 marker. <clears throat> and then we're going to go for the really light one. I do want to leave some light areas so that it's not all completely filled in with the middle gray. I think his nose might need to go darker now. I love how the Copics just blend each other pretty naturally. Now I'm going to go back over some of the areas that I want to be darker again. <clears throat> His nose didn't end up staying a nice dark gray that I wanted. And I'm also going to add some hairs so he's a little on the fuzzier side. How big is my Copic collection? Um, I think I have most of the ones that are the chow markers. And I'm guessing it's, oh, I don't remember. I don't remember if I bought the sets of 70, I think it was two sets of 72, I think. And then I have a few other random ones that I've picked up from time to time.
But people have been asking what colors I recommend that you buy if you're going to buy Copics. And basically I recommend getting as many as you can. If you're going to invest in them, get a set because they're, um, <clears throat> they're cheaper when you buy them by the set than if you just buy them um, individually. So even if you have a 40% off coupon, it's not going to get you very far because it's going to take forever to get a collection of them. <clears throat> but if you're just going to buy a few colors, think about the kind of things that you like to color and what your stamp collection is. If you have mostly little kids to color, then invest in some um, skin tones and some clothing colors that you like for the seasons that are coming up so you'll have stuff to color with. Um, if you like flowers, pick your favorite flower colors. And get something that's dark and light in each of the color families. <clears throat> so you can blend them. And there's one other gray color that I'm looking for. And the cap of it is so light I can never find it. Just a little bit more gray in here. So he feels just a little bit more like a overall gray bunny. look and see some of these questions that are up here because I've missed a bunch. Um, Prisma colors with baby oil I'm going to be doing in just a few minutes. wanted to do a couple Copics first. Um, and the, the difference between the chows and the sketch markers is the size of them. The sketch are like this and they hold more ink in the barrel, but they're the same marker as these, which are the uh, the chows, and they're cheaper. Even their nibs are the same, so they color the same. But there's more colors available in this one than there are available in this one. So, <clears throat> and with the Copics, when I bought my sets of 72 about a year and a half ago, I got them for about the same price as Tombow's when I bought a set of 72. So they were like two something a piece. But it really depends on how many you're buying and where you're getting them. I don't know what the current prices are for them. Um, Ms. Hat, they are alcohol inks in them. And they're refillable. Yay Chris, seven packages. I'm expecting a lot because I've had a lot of emails telling me lots of cards are coming. They dry fast. They completely dry. These are all totally dried and can be, can be worked with. <clears throat> um, and Superior than Ranger, um, Ranger doesn't make alcohol inks that go in markers, so it's not necessarily Superior, but it's Okay, bye Dixie. Um, it's just different. It's just different th what they use them for. Yeah, Uzak and Icopic are both great places. There's a lot of companies out there that sell them, all different kinds. So, all right, I'm going to put the Copics away for a moment and <clears throat> get out the pencils and baby oil. Now some people use Gamsol instead of baby oil, <coughs> which is perfectly fine as well. It just doesn't smell as nice as baby oil, so I like baby oil myself. Let's see, left, right, let's go. Well, I guess I'm not going to be able to have both of them on screen. So there we go. <clears throat> the uh, 
Let's see, maybe this time I'll make a medium brown bunny instead of a dark brown bunny. Mm. The right colors that I want. And I'm going to make him a little bit of a golden bunny. Kind of a really warm brown. Well, I'm glad to be able to help you guys out, uh, No Spring Chick. Um, that's one of the reasons why I thought this Ustream thing would be kind of cool because I like doing tutorials and I'm asked a lot to do tutorials, but I'm not really, I don't have enough time to produce the videos and doing all the post-production editing. So these are <clears throat> kind of really quick and dirty. <laughs> There's no great post-production involved in them and they're not elaborate, but they're quick and it's coloring things that I already color anyway. So I am most happy to share what little I know. So with pencils, I get them really sharp, <clears throat> oh, and my pencil sharpener is not pen plugged in, hold on. <clears throat> sharpener, what happened to you? Let's try that again. I have an electric pencil sharpener, and as a professional colored pencil illustrator, I the technique that I used to use was really all about how sharp the pencil was because I really worked with the pe um, texture of the paper. So even when I'm just coloring stamped images, I still am obsessive about the sharp pencil. Because with colored pencil, you can start filling in some of those spots. You know, if you color just across something, you'll end up with white spots with the pattern of the paper. And if you uh, if you end up with a really sharp pencil, you can eliminate some of that, and it'll end up being smoother. But we're going to use the baby oil on it, so it's not going to matter a whole lot. So I'm just giving it some basic color. I told you I wanted him to be a little bit of a warm brown bunny, so I'm going to add some yellow, which might seem a little counterintuitive, but it's going to help that brown stay really warm instead of getting all kind of dead brown. And I'm drawing it like I'm drawing little hairs around the thing. And there's definitely going to be more of the brown pencil than there is the warm yellow, but in just a few moments you will see what will happen. <clears throat> now I'm taking a cream. I'm filling in just to give a little bit more color. that'll give it something to blend into. Now this is called a blending stump. <clears throat> and you can get them in different sizes, but when you use them with this, I don't find that you need to keep changing them. You know, one will just generally work pretty well. <clears throat> Blending stumps may work on the Crayolas. I'm not sure. I have not played with them very much, but I know they work really well with the Prismas. So I get a little bit, let me get this over here, make sure I'm on the screen. Um, and I get the tip wet. And then just start, just like you did with the Copics. I'm going to start from the darkest and start mushing into the lighter areas. And don't be afraid to put a reasonable amount on there, not a ton, but 
and then I'm pressing pretty good to try to pull that <coughs> pencil color around. And it increases the vibrancy because you're blending that color into the paper. Maybe on this one I'll just do it on the left half, or the, I guess it's the right half of what you're seeing, so that you'll be able to see the difference in whether you use or don't use the baby oil. And the effect of it just feels like magic sometimes, so that's why they call this in a lot of different venues, they'll call it the magic colored pencil technique. Uh, no, the baby oil does not leave a mark on the paper. And then if you're blending out to a solid white, sometimes you might notice a little bit of it, but not a whole lot. It also, you can go back in and draw over top of it. So I can go back in and add some of my hairs that I lost in the blending. And again, I wish this was clearer. I wonder if it would be less fuzzy if it were up higher. I don't know if that helps you to see the difference between the side where I did do the baby oil and the side that I didn't. But I'll do some close-up pictures on my blog later today and you'll be able to see them better. That will hopefully help. Just check in the chat. How often to re-wet the stump? As soon as you see it not blending anymore, you can go get more of the baby oil. You'll want to make sure that you keep that oil on there to push the pencil around. Oh, we got way more people than we had last time. So hello everybody. How about a shout out? Where's everybody watching from today? <clears throat> where, where are you guys watching from? I have low Cornell and EK pencils. I would say try the pencils that you have and see if this works with it. Because if it works with it, um, don't go buy something new. Like I, when people tell me they, they have and they like their Tombow markers, um, go ahead and use them until they run out. Uh, don't go buying Copics just because I say buy Copics. Um, I don't really want everybody wasting a lot of money they don't have to have. So. Wow, Dixie, that was quick. You must have been picking up, not shipping. <clears throat> if the light's right, lead foot. <laughs> My mail won't get here for another hour or so. Pretty likely. So after we get done here, I'll post a picture of especially this one and each of the other ones. I'll do a nice close-up so you can get in there and see how I'm drawing the hairs in there before I fill it in with the baby oil. Because I know it's not optimal to see it here on the screen. Oh, 
Oh, good. Good, the cheap, cheap Crayolas will blend, the ones from Target. Cool. Good to know. Want some real critique? Where can you post your images? Um, how about when I post my uh, the pictures of these? I'll put an in links up there, and you guys can post them there. And I will go and visit your stuff, and you can you can, you can all go visit each other's bunnies. Go bunny hopping, and. <coughs> get some feedback because it's always helpful to have other people look at what you're doing. And give me some ideas on what's working and what's not. Now one of the reasons that I'm getting like a gray spot there is that the oil does go through the paper but it will dry and I think that spot will go away. Because I think it's because I'm working on brown cardboard. I was trying for a neutral color so that it doesn't mess up the color on the screen for the little bunny images. So this little guy is kind of done on that left, that right side. And I did put the pencil sharpener on the other side of the room so I don't end up scaring everybody with that loud noise. Now with the colored pencil you can also probably be a little more delicate than you can with the Copics. Because with the Copic I just kind of filled in the, uh, the ear. If I were taking more time I might do some of this but it's a lot easier to do with the pencil because it's really sharp and has a really fine point to it. <clears throat> Because really the bunny has um, white hairs on his ears and it's only the only pink part is on the very inside of his skin. Yes, it is a powerful pencil sharpener. If it were right here next to me, it would be really, really loud. So where do you get the tiny blending stick? You can get those at Michael's and Joanne's, any craft store or art store. And they come in usually little packs. This one had a, a pack with a couple of them in it. Uh, it doesn't matter what brand, but go for one that's about a pencil point type thickness because there's some that are really fat. They'll be as fat as a whole pencil, but you want them to be <clears throat> a little bit thinner so you have more control because if you have a big fat nib, it's going to be a little harder to control it. And maybe now we'll try a, how about we try an all-white bunny? What would you do if you were making an all-white bunny? It's going to be easier to do with the pencils than it is with the uh, Copics. So, there's a couple different ways to go with a bunny. And then you make any object, actually, that's all-white because nothing is completely white. Everything has a little bit of color of some sort. <laughs> oh, the sharpener brand. It's a Panasonic and it's probably 20 years old. It was from when I was in college. Because <clears throat> I went to school to be an illustrator and I was going to, uh, I was going to illustrate children's books. And that didn't go very far. So with an all-white bunny, it's either going to have kind of a bluish tinge to it. We'll make it a fresher white if it's got just a little bit of blue. And if you want them to be a little creamier and a little warmer, you would use either a brown a light brown or a little bit of a uh, cream, yellow, orange, that kind of thing. But this will be more of a silvery blue.
slip of bunny. So I'm using a little bit of blue and a little more gray, but just a really light gray. You could just leave them entirely white, but that really isn't any fun when you're talking coloring because it's fun to add some shading to it. Because even white bunnies have shading to them. going to see about this. They're having a little music in the background. Somebody said last time having some soft music while I color would be helpful instead of just listening to me breathe. <laughs> so I don't know if that's even hearable. Just doing the same thing as I did with the other one. <clears throat> Mushing around the pencil with the baby oil. And I think unless your your stub, your blending stub, ends up getting really super dingy. I went from coloring a brown bunny to blending this <clears throat> whitish bluish bunny and I'm not noticing any color difference in what's getting blended so I don't think it picks up <clears throat> the color so you don't have to have a... I, some people will recommend that you have one blending stump for your browns and one for your pinks and one for your yellows and all that but play with it and see I would definitely buy a whole package of them so in case you decide you need a different one you'll have it but you don't need to have one for each of them. And I just realized I didn't tell you the most important part of doing your bunnies. And that will be whiskers. I deliberately didn't do these bunnies with whiskers. And I know I had a good reason at the time, but I didn't. So you'll need to add your own whiskers to them. <clears throat> and bunnies' whiskers come out of the center area of their, their nose. From, from here they go outward so you can take either a black pen I've got a really thin black pen that I'm using here but I think my reason for not doing it not drawing them on was because they blend better and they look a little less obtrusive if you do them in the color that the bunny is so here I can make brown whiskers and then they don't leap off the bunny quite so strongly <clears throat> and here I can use black ones for my gray bunny.
so. So there's four bunnies. Like it better without the whiskers? See, I like the whiskers, but now people have a choice. They can do it either way. Wait till it dries. Um, I definitely wait till you're done with coloring your bunny because if you color over top of the whiskers, you might drag some color around and you don't want to do that. So it's safest to, um, to go ahead and wait until you're finished coloring it and then add the whiskers on. Now bear in mind, you may want to try drawing whiskers on something else so that in case you mess up with drawing your whiskers, you haven't ruined your whole colored piece. But <clears throat> something else you can add, and I'll, I'll do it on this other bunny because I'm using this pen and it's called a multi-liner pen. It's the same ink that's in, um, I think it's the same ink as Memento, but, um, but it's just a, an ink pen. So it's going to act the same way as Memento ink would. So you can also, instead of having whiskers, if you don't like those, you can even just add, you know, you'll see the pores of a bunny when you look really closely. And that's really where the whiskers come out of, but you could just add the little dots. And it has a similar effect to having the whole whiskers on it. Now I'm gonna take a big risk and I'm going to get my chalks out. <clears throat> I don't use chalks very much. I'm pretty rotten with them. But I'm going to try doing a bunny in chalks and see because I know people, some people like to do that. So we're going to see how that goes. Now for this set of chalks that I have, I have different, um, different ones of these applicators. You can see they're kind of yellowed, so I don't use them much. But when I found these this morning, I thought, you know, I haven't played with them in a long time. <clears throat> Might as well give it a shot. And a soft bunny is just as good as anything else, I suppose, to try them on. So I'm going to do a brown bunny. One of the problems that I have with chalks is that they come in so few colors, and I really like colors. So, let's see if I can get this on the screen here. I don't know if any of you guys are chalk users, you can probably laugh at me making a mess of them. Um, they're also, these things don't get very sharp. <laughs> I really like things that are sharp and give me a lot of control. with chalks, they just get messy really fast. There's not much control at all. Pointed cotton swabs? No, I haven't. Like I said, I haven't had my um, chalks out in eons. So this is a live mistake making session. <laughs> so I would love to see if somebody else is really good with chalks. What the heck you do with this bunny? Because I'm clueless. <clears throat> It's a very different look than the other bunnies, but <clears throat> since bunnies are so soft anyway, it's a pretty good type of image to use for chalks. Let's see, would his nose be darker brown, maybe, I guess? Oh, I know. I think his nose the the dark gray color. He can be a mixed bunny. Because I know some bunnies do have both dark and light.
Well, there's a train wreck. A little more brown here. So this is what happens when I decide at the last minute I'm going to do something I haven't done in a long time. Live. Ah, oh, here for the kind of funky looking bunny. But there you go. One good bunny out of four. <laughs> I need an eraser. So erase things. Uh, let me see what other questions are there. What size did I make my bunnies before printing? Um, I printed them three across on a sheet of paper. Let me see. These bunnies are two inches from well, a little under two inches from ear to ear. So if you make them bigger, it's going to be easier to color because these are tiny, tiny bunnies I'm working with. Um, what type of paper? This is the um, GP110 from Walmart. Remove when too dark it lightens the chalk. Well, I could do that. Let me see if I can find an eraser here. Ooh. Oh, you know, I think I remember what happened to my eraser. I used to have a, um, a needed eraser, but when I went through and did my big uh, craft room cleaning recently, I think I tossed it because it was rock hard because I hadn't used it in so long. So. Um, you can have a special paper for the Copics. They recommend, I, the thing that everybody says works best is the paper tray, but I'm cheap. So I asked when I went to the Copic training with Marianne and she said that the GP 110 works fine. It's still a little on the cheap side. It's not as white and not as, um, as heavy as I would like it to have, but it's okay. Not too bad. Oh, Ms. Hat, sorry. <laughs> I don't even think I introduced myself at the beginning of the video anyway, so you didn't miss it. Uh, my, my name is Sandy, and I'm president of Operation Right Home. Oh, sounds like there's a kitty who wants to join us. Oh. <clears throat> you can try it with smaller bunnies. Yeah, try them different sizes and see what works. Um, you can play around with how much detail you can get in different sizes. Ah, Flo, I remember your name. Indeed. And Amy. I don't know if I'm going to remember everybody's names. I'll, I'll start remembering your Ustream handles, but <laughs> some people I know immediately and others not so much. Okay, going back to the pencil blending, I had to use a lot. Um, wait and see if it dries. Um, mine is completely dry <clears throat> at this point, but there's still some marks on the back, as you can see. So there is a little bit there, but there shouldn't be any blotches overly visible, so it should dry back. And if it doesn't, then you're definitely using too much. <clears throat> and the Crayola blending, probably the reason that everybody recommends to use the Prismacolor is probably because it doesn't need as much oil. Uh, the cheaper pencils probably need more oil to get them to blend. And with pencil, I also work in layers. So, <clears throat> oh, and here's the kitty here to moon us again. Um, kitty, 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 kitty. Um, yeah. <laughs> Crash! Yeah, so that's probably it. It's probably the uh, the other pencils that don't work very well. <clears throat> but I also work in layers. So if you if you do some of the pencil and blend it, then add another layer and blend it and another layer and blend it, you're a little more likely to not have to use as much oil because if you get really heavy, then the oil has to work too hard to get through all that kind of um, like waxy buildup. I know that sounds like a TV commercial, but um, you'll get a waxy buildup from having too much colored pencil too thick. 
So if you work light in a bunch of different layers, just keep going over it slowly. Yep, the chalk bunny would definitely work. Now I don't know <clears throat> if that's going to end up making a mess. Um, because I think chalk may need to be cured, but <clears throat> I have to get rid of the cat. Sorry, boy. Um, so be careful if you if you try the chalk. I don't want to do it right here on screen in case I destroy it, but um, <clears throat> I think Velda sounds like you've worked with chalks more. Do you have problems with the chalk kind of mushing off? Yeah, use hairspray. Because I've gotten a few cards in <coughs> that were colored in chalk and there was barely any color left on them. It was so soft. And I don't know if that's how it was intended at the beginning, but there wasn't much color left. Spray them with fixative. Yeah, there, I know that there's an artist fixative that you can put on chalk too. Yeah, I'm hoping you could just take a little quick spritz on a small piece like this so that it won't have to curl, but I suppose if you have to iron, then you have to iron. Um, but I do know when I was in art school and they said that, you know, when you're spraying something, that you want to hold the, um, <clears throat> let me turn back to this camera for a second. If you're going to spray, hold it way up here and let the let the stuff fall onto it instead of spraying directly on it because if you spray directly on it you might get wet spots on the paper so <clears throat> so when I'm finished it's gonna go on I don't think it's gonna go on stars and stamps I'm trying to figure out um, which is gonna be the best place to link all this stuff to because we have so much regular content on the Stars and Stamps blog. Um, I don't really want to clog it up with a whole lot of this. But what I'll do is, um, if you come back to this page and click as though you're going to watch the video, if you look down at the video down below, um, if you were to click on that, don't do it right now or else you'll leave this one, um, a page comes up with comments and I'll leave a link in the comments there to wherever it's posted when it goes up. Because I think I'm going to do it on my blog People are used to getting too much content on mine, but um, there's a lot of people that complain that we have too much content going up on our Stars and Stamps blog even all the time. So um, my blog, and it's the reason for the name of the channel, my blog is called acolorfulworld.blogspot.com. And so you can go there as well and see the stuff. And that's also the place where I've been announcing, <clears throat> for the most part, that we're going to do these um, coloring sessions and different stuff. Because um, the people who are really diehards and <laughs> want to follow me around and do more tend to follow my blog. Um, so I'm trying to keep the Stars and, Stri Stars and Stamps and uh, Homefront blog a little more directly O-W-H-E. <laughs> Stalking me. I sometimes feel I have stalkers, Erica. I do, I do. <coughs> so did you guys like being able to color along with um, with what I'm doing on the screen? Because we could do this again. You guys can pick another freebie image that you want to work with, and we can, you know, we can work on doing it. And next Saturday is the blog hop, so I'm not going to do this next Saturday. Um, but maybe Sunday, but I'm not really sure. I've got so much going on um, in the next couple weeks, so we'll see if uh, you can't keep up with me. I'm sorry. I know you can't keep up with me. <laughs> um, but I am going to try to do more of these. Um, because I would, I would love to share more with you guys and help people out more. When does this normally start? I don't have any set times for these. Um, I do have a set time Thursday nights at 6.30 for the OWH TV show, but not for 
these random tutorial things. These are going to just be kind of hit or miss. But you can also, if I remember to click the record button, which I did this time, um, then um, you'll be able to watch them later. So even if you miss them, you'll be able to see them later. So, yeah, that's a good idea, Nancy. If you print them out again and watch it again <clears throat> while you color, then maybe that'll help. Because I could have gone slower, but then this video would have been hours long and then a lot of people wouldn't stick around to watch. So. <laughs> Couldn't figure out the time difference. Well, that's why I don't post the time difference because I don't know what the time difference is. All I know is East Coast and West Coast and everything in between is mush in my brain. <clears throat> in the middle of grays. <laughs> well, we could end up, if we get enough complaints, changing the time of the Thursday show, but I'm going to try for Thursdays at 6.30 and see how it happens. See how that goes. So we'll give it a shot. Excellent. Are you guys all, all going to try to come on Thursday? I know a couple of you have been around for some of the practice sessions when we did the Stump Sandy sessions, which has been a blast. So I hope everybody's going to like that. <clears throat> You're going to have a party. Yay! You're totally a multitasker, watching Grays, watching OWH TV, and making cards all at the same time. Alrighty, guys. Well, I'm going to get going because i got to get this stuff posted for you, <clears throat> get the photographs taken, and I've got boxes to get packed. Because I've got to, I've got to try to see if I can empty out my shelves this week. Get lots of boxes out to our heroes. Well, I hope it was helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I will put the in links on my blog so that you can leave your images and I can come and see what you did. Okie dokie. Yes, we'll definitely do it again. But it won't be next Saturday because of the blog hops. Don't forget to go to the blog hop. Plan lots of time so you can go visit and see lots of really great cards. Alrighty, guys. Um, Punch wants to say goodbye. He's back again. Oh, and now he left. He just left up here. Come here, kitty boy. Come here. Do you want to come say goodbye to everybody? Well, come here. I just told him he wanted to say goodbye. And now he's going to not cooperate. Isn't that just like a cat? <clears throat> Fantastic. Um, my blog is a colorful world dot blogspot dot com and colorful is spelled the British way with an extra U in it. But I will put um, I'll put a link in the comments underneath of this and I'll also post it on our Facebook page so that you guys can find it as well. So if you come back to watch this video again, you'll have the link right there. Let's see. Is it... Here, let me type it in for you. There you go. <clears throat> so go check that in about an hour. I'll see if I can get these pictures done and uploaded real quickly. Okie dokie. And of course, there's the kitty. <clears throat> So, goodbye from all of us here at OWH. Bye! <laughs> meow, meow, meow. Keep on sending in those cards and letters. Bye.